Yeah, so uh, hi everyone. So uh, thank you for attending to this uh, IFKL online workshop. So today we are honored to have uh, Jama Jayamol uh, J to present to us uh, about his project regarding uh, aggregation and, and aggregation uh, circuits uh, in MACE. Yeah, so uh, Jay, why don't you just uh, introduce yourself? Hello everyone, uh, I am Janma Jay. You can call me Jay for short. And yeah, so I work on Xenonic stuff. I've uh, been working with the um, Prevacine Scaling Group. Now I've I'm switched to working on um, Anonymous Postbox, which uses, which is a privacy sort of anonymous messaging app that enhances your privacy. It does not track any metadata. So I'm working on that right now. And that's it. So my interests are zero knowledge proofs, fully homomorphic encryption, and homomorphic encryption. Yeah. So let's get started. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get started. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. So uh, the meetup is about Maze, which is a CLI tool for building aggregation circuit for Plonk proofs. So I'll quickly share my screen. Wait a minute. Share my screen. Is this visible? Yeah, it's visible. Okay. So um, what is proof aggregation? So as I understand that a lot of people are, I think folks over here are familiar with circuits, which is that you write a circuit for which you generate zero knowledge proofs using a specific scheme. So the scheme could be GOT16 or Plonk, and there are various other schemes. Um, so right now, what you can do is that you can add a circuit, have a single input and a output that will be the proof. Now, what if you want to aggregate proofs of several inputs into a single proof and then use that single proof for uh, verification of all the inputs and that is proof aggregation. So what you can do is that you can take a bunch of proofs that you have generated on single inputs and build an aggregation circuit with which you can generate an aggregated proof and a verification of the aggregated proof would verify the rest of the proofs, which is why we use proof aggregation. Now, okay. yeah, so without proof aggregation, if you use GROT16, that is a specific scheme for using which you can generate zero knowledge proofs, the execution cost on Ethereum on L1, oh, execution, execution cost on Ethereum is around 200,000 units, uh, 200,000 gas units. And the call data cost without any public inputs is around 128 bytes. In case of Plonk, the execution cost is 300,000 units and the call data cost is around 400 bytes. Also, uh, just to be sure that I'm not speaking in blank, uh, how do you understand what, 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 what do I mean by execution cost? Can you explain that? I don't know. Yeah, sure. So basically on Ethereum, you have to run the instructions for the smart, for the execution of the function in the smart contract. And the execution costs something, and that is the execution cost. And the cost is charged in gas units, which is what I mean by 200,000 gas units. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Uh, and the call data cost is that you need to send the proof in the call data to the smart contract. Right? So that the, the size of the call data is 128 bytes. So the higher the call data is, 
the higher the cost for the verification of the proof on 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 ethereum does it make sense so zk lim has a question saying that uh, is it same like op code guess wait uh yeah, that's the question yeah so that's what that is what i mean by execution cost right because every instruction is a op code and every op code has a corresponding gas unit charged with it so that's what i mean by execution cost you're right so okay i'm sorry i'm not able to go back for some reason uh, yeah. So, in case of you should three hundred thousand, you call data cost is four hundred bytes. And as I said before, uh, the higher for you to generate uh, two by five proofs on Ethereum. Now, in case of L2, L2s, the execution cost is very cheap, but the uh, send the day. Let's so let's try out how does it work. Um, to do that, okay. Let me. I'll stop sharing my screen and then share another screen to actually show you how it works. Does it works? Yep, yep. Okay. Okay, just give me two minutes. Um hmm. okay, I think I should be able to do this. Give me two minutes. And uh Okay, share my screen. Hmm. Why am I not able to share this? Hmm. Okay. Is it visible? Yes, it's visible. Okay, so for the demo, I will be using the readme that uh, is there in GitHub Maze. So I'll, I'll open the repository of Maze. Uh, wait a minute. So this is the repository of Maze. And then I'll be following this readme that you can follow anytime to actually um, build a creation circuit. How maze make constant guess possible? So um, the property of constant gas isn't limited to maze. It's the property that you get with aggregated proofs. So you can think of an aggregated proof as a single proof. Now, what it has done is that it has verified a bunch of proofs and then created a proof of that verification into a single proof. So verification of the single proof verifies the rest of the inputs. So which is why, uh, and, and then you can just simply use the single proof uh, on chain or the verification. So, which is why the gas cost does not scale with the number of inputs because everything is 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 present inside the single proof. Does it make sense? Uh, I'm asking uh, Lim if that makes sense. If that answers your question, cool. Okay. So now, 
uh, let's get started with this. So the way it works is, is that you need to first install a specific fork of Snark.js, and then you need to install the Maze CLI tool to build aggregation circuit. So to install the specific fork of Snark.js, you need to get clone this repository. And then install it. What I've done is that I've actually downloaded it beforehand. Is my uh, VS Code visible? Uh, yes, it's visible. Okay. So uh, I've already cloned the repository of Snark.js. And then let's install this repository. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, CD install it. Is, uh, so I, I think my terminal is visible, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So what you can do is uh, first I'll run in pin install. And then And then I'll run npm run build. And I think it's, what's the command for this? npm run build CLI. So what it does is that it will build the CLI tool of Snark.js. And then I can uh, install it. So sudo npm install global. I need to uh, put in sort of flag because I'm installing it globally and then install it. Right, so the tool has been installed. Let's just verify it once, Snark.js. So how many, how, how many of you are familiar with this uh, CLI tool? So uh, as I said before, Uh, hi. So I will you saying that, can, so to repeat the question is that can aggregated proof be reversed or deconstructed back to the initial proofs? Uh, I don't think so because that would, that would violate the property of zero knowledge, right? So in zero knowledge, the verifier cannot learn anything. I don't think that's possible. Yeah. So does that answer the question? Um, okay, I think it does. Okay. So how many how many of you are familiar with this particular tool? Um Snark.js? I am not really familiar with this, but yeah, I'm gonna okay. carry on. Okay, so what you can do with Snark.js is that you can write a circuit in circum that is uh yeah, so circum is a language in which you can write R1CS circuits. And what is a circuit? You write circuit to prove a computation. So with Snark.js, you can set up the circuit for a specific proving scheme. It could be GOT16, as you can see over here, or it could be Plonk. In case of Maze, we only use Plonk. So we set up the circuit for Plonk and then build the aggregation circuit using Maze. Now, in this specific fork of Snark.js, you would see that I've got an additional command called Plonk Setup Maze. So what is Plonk Setup Maze? Using this particular command, you can generate necessary files for your circuit so that you can build aggregation circuit inside Maze. So, and, and the files that it generates are the verification key for the Plonk. Uh, the proofs.json file, that is a bunch of sample proofs and the corresponding bunch of uh, public signals proof, public signals file. And then you use these files to build the aggregation circuit inside Maze. So first I would uh, create a circum circuit and then carry on from there. So let's just create a new 
file circuit dot circum and uh, I will paste circuit. So this is a multiplier circuit that I'll be using. So it just verifies that this particular constraint holds. So this is this is the circuit that I'll be using. And then I'll also download a tau file. So do you guys know what is a tau file? No for me. No for me as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's powers a tau file. So a tau file consists of common reference string, which is a CRS that you need for Plonk scheme as well as God 16 scheme. So it's just a bunch of secrets that you need to actually generate a circuit. So yeah, so I just downloaded a tau file for two to the power 15 uh, rows. And basically what is what a rows and what is this, what does this 15 means? What it means is that uh, you've got a big enough circuit which uh, requires two to the power 15 rows to prove the computation. Now, moving forward from here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to generate R1CS file and as well as, well as the POSM file for the circuit, for that is the uh, mul multiplier circuit. Okay, looks like there's something wrong. Ah, uh, sorry. I should do it over here. Right, so we just created a WASM file for the circuit and the RVCS file for the circuit. And we can have a look of look over here. Now, I will set up long for the circuit RVCS using the tau file that I just downloaded. And I think I downloaded the wrong wrong folder. Just give me two minutes. I'll just drag it outside. And there you go. And the setup runs successfully. Now what we do is that I would create an input file, which is input.json. This input file would contain bunch of inputs. So it will contain different inputs for which I want to generate uh, zero knowledge proofs using the circuit that I, that I just um, created here. So these are the inputs. We've got two inputs, this and this. And now I can generate proofs for these inputs using snark.js. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take these inputs and generate proofs for them, as well as public JSON files for them, so that I can use those files inside mains. So, um, and for that, I would be using this command, which is snark.js plong setup maze inputs file, which are the files over here, and the wasm file. Now, for some reason, for the past few days, because of some incompatibility with Wasm, this command isn't working. Uh, if you do this, it will throw this error. But if you, you can actually trust me on this, what it would do is that it will generate three files, which are these three files. The first file is the verification key for the Plong circuit. The second file contains two proofs for corresponding to the two inputs that we had. And the third file, which is public dot public signals dot JSON file, um, contains public inputs corresponding to the inputs uh, inputs dot JSON file. Now we can use these three files to generate uh, to build a navigation circuit for two proofs. 
Now let's head over to, let's head, now let's install maze tool so that we can use that tool to build a Gaussian circuit. And for that, you will have to, uh, sorry. It up. Any questions? Hi, Jay. Uh, I'm here again. So if you don't mind, if I ask a bit more fundamental question. So uh, layer two solution has like under two umbrella. One is snark, one is stark. So under snark, it has plong and a graph 16. And then maze is a type of tool that uses plong that is easier for user to use. Is, is that correct? Did I frame it correctly? Yeah. Uh, you sort of framed it correctly up to the point. So maze is a tool that builds an aggregation circuit for plong proofs. Does that make sense? Or sh should I dig a deep, a big deeper? Uh, maybe a bit deeper. I think I'm slowly getting it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, okay. Let me, let me think how to explain that. Mm, okay. So you know that you can generate proofs for a plonk circuit, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to generate hundred proofs, you would like, if you want to generate, if you want to prove hundred inputs, you would have hundred proofs, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what if you want to have a single proof for those hundred proofs? The way you do that is by building an aggregation circuit, which aggregates all those proofs into a single proof. And that's it. So mm -hmm. main is a tool for um, aggregating those proofs into a single proof. Mm. So it's like telling that these hundred proofs are proven correctly with just feeding one, go through this aggregator, which is maze, and then just shows that, okay, uh, uh, just one uh, aggregate all the hundred proofs, and then for the output will be a one proven proof, right? Yeah. Oh, so, okay. yeah. So you have a single proof, and once you verify that single proof, all the proofs are verified. Mm, okay. Okay. So maze is a tool for doing that. Maze helps you to generate that single proof. Right. Okay. Right. And then it's using Plong and then uh, maybe uh, just a bit deeper, which is uh, Plong is a much newer compared to Graph 16, is it? Um, yes. Plonk is uh, Plonk scheme was introduced. As, as, uh, I'm not sure when when it was introduced, but I think it was 2019 or 2018. I'm not sure, but yeah, <laughs> it's much newer than God 16. But I mean, they've got their own places, their own trade offs. Mm. But yeah, uh, Plonk opened up a new space about what could be done in terms of circuits. Like it, it improvised a lot. Mm, right, right. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So, uh, Vincent has a follow up question. So, uh, does this mean more things to prove increases security? Does this mean more things to prove increases security? Uh, no. Um, security, it does not increase security because you're still using the same scheme. So yeah, no, it does not increase security. The security remains the same as of the framework that are using for building the execution circuit. Okay. Anything else? Any more questions? Uh, just another a bit more fundamental question. Just like I mentioned the execution cost because I haven't written any smart contract to push to a blockchain. So uh, is it the unit? It's under GUI, is it, or is or other units? Uh, GUI is the unit for pricing and execution cost. Mm, so, okay. Uh, if you so gas units, let's let's say 
my execution costs 10 gas units. Now, GUE would be that how much are you willing to pay for each of those ga gas units? Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Cool. Uh, yes. Yeah, so let's get back to the demo. Does it work? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to the demo. So to use maze, you need to actually first uh, clone this repository and then install it. So I've already cloned the repository here. As you can see, I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm right inside the directory. What I'm going to do is I will first build it and then install it. So cargo build um, release. So you would need Rust to use Maze, or you can get a binary from somewhere else, somewhere else. So you just need a binary file that is the file for the CLR tool, and you can just use that directly. But right now I'm building it, and then I'll install it so that I can use it. Um, it is taking a while. Hmm. Any other questions, meanwhile? No. Yeah, I, I think I have a question from my side. So, like, I, I don't think I'm uh, explaining correctly about the security, but basically what I'm trying to ask was that, like, since you have a lot of things to prove, right, then it means that it increases, like, there's a lot of, like, if we talk about a like, normal programming language, it's like, basically more proof is like more if else statement is it. Like more if you're checking, you're checking because there's just a lot of proof. Is it? Uh, so, okay. Hmm. Since the security of any single proof depends on the scheme. Since we're not changing the scheme, neither the security nor the, uh, yeah the security neither increases or decreases. Okay, and then like, just wondering like, why do we need a lot of proofs? Uh, why do we need a lot of proofs? Yeah, because like, because like just now you said like, only with one proof, you can actually bypass all the proof, right? But why do you, why do we need so, so many proofs? Like, if it's like why not why not why not one for example, and why does it need like a lot of proofs? Right. Uh, so why do we need a lot of proofs? It depends on the application, to be honest. So, for example, in case of scalability, there are L twos like zk ABMs. They generate many proofs. But when they have to submit the proofs on chain, if they submit all the proofs, then it will be costly for them, right? So what they do is that they aggregate all those proofs into a single proof and then submit only that single proof on chain. Does it make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. Thank you so much. Yes, which is why they're able to save a lot of cost. Okay. Uh, now, yeah, so it, it finished. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to cargo install it in my path. And this will install the main CLI tool in my PC. So, like, one question. So, basically, so that's why it's called like zk rollup. Is it like you comp you're comp compiling everything into one and you prove it at the same time? 
uh, ZK roll up, you prove the batch at the same time. I'm not sure if that is the only reason why it is called a ZK roll up, but yeah, you, you sort of rolling up a bunch of proofs into a single proof. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, and and the 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 circuit, it's the way that the proofs are being proven. Is it the scheme that you mentioned? It's how we arrive to prove that, let's say, a hundred things that requires to be proven. So the the scheme is how we arrive to prove and consolidate, aggregate into one. Is it? Uh, the scheme is uh, so this. What you're talking about is the circuit, aggregation circuit. Now the scheme is used for generating proofs. Sorry. So the scheme is used for generating proofs for the circuit. So you've got a circuit, let's say uh, you've written a circuit and it's an aggregation circuit. Now you will use a specific scheme like Plonk or Groth 16 to uh, prove that the computation that is done, that is the, the, the proof, sorry, the input that is used for the circuit is valid or satisfy the circuit. Right, okay, okay. So it's like to check the circuit whether it's correct. Uh, can you say that again, please? Uh, so the scheme is like a way to check whether the circuit is, has done its job properly. Right, right, right yeah. You correct on that. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks. Because there's just too many jargon at, <laughs> at, the, at the same time. So yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, if you if if uh, if something that I say that does not make sense, please stop me right away and then ask me. Uh yeah, so now this tool is installed and we can check that using the help command. So you can see over here, there are a bunch of commands. The first one is mock setup. Mock setup would take the files that we have generated over here. These are the three files and build an aggregation circuit for you and then run a mock prover. So mock prover is like a prover, but it runs a bit faster, a, a lot faster than the actual proof because it, not, it does not generate an actual proof. Rather, it just checks whether the aggregation circuit has been constructed correctly or not. So you, you use mock setup to check whether everything is working correctly or not. Um, and the second command is generate EVM verifier. So it would build the aggregation circuit and output solidity bytecode. And then you can um, the, send this bytecode on EVA, on Ethereum, and create a new smart contract to verify your aggregated proofs on chain. And then you've got create proof. Create proof is, and you use create proof to um, create proofs for a aggregation circuit. And then you can also verify the proof here. And then you can also simulate verification of the proof inside the EVM using this command, using EVM verify proof. And that's it, you can create params as well, which is not that useful, but yeah, you've got this over here. Now for this demo, I would stick to mock setup because running rest of the commands is a bit, bit expensive. So I would check what are the things required for mock setup. Hmm. So mock setup requires three arguments. The first one is verification key. Second is proofs, which are the sample proofs. The third is public signals, which are the sample public signals. And as you must have noticed, we've got these three files over here. So what I'm going to do is that I'll get into the directory of these three files. Uh, wait, uh, okay. Output files. And then, yeah, you've got these three files over here. I'll use maze, setup, prover, what was it? Setup, setup, oh, sorry. 
it was mock setup. <laughs> mock setup and uh, verification key proofs and public JSON, and then execute it. So what this command does is that it will read in the files, build the aggregation circuit for two proofs. And right now it is running a mock prover on the aggregation circuit to check whether this particular aggregation circuit is built correctly or not. Now, you would notice that this aggregation circuit only supports two proofs. Now, what if you want to have 10 proofs or 20 proofs? The trick in this case is that you actually generate the aggregation circuit for a higher maximum value. So if you want to prove five or 10 or 20 proofs, what you would do is that you would build an aggregation circuit for 50 proofs, and then you can generate, you can aggregate proofs up till 50 proofs. So that's how you actually um, use this in uh, real life or in, in, in practical scenario. Now, uh, you would notice that the aggregation circuit was built successfully and it took 26 seconds. Now, if I was creating a proof for the aggregation circuit, it might have taken around five minutes. So you notice the difference between mock setup and create proof. And that's it. So that's the demo. Uh, any questions? Okay. Hello. Hello. Well, can I can I uh, uh, can I question? Yeah. yeah, sure. Closer, closer. Okay. Uh, so the question is like, uh, right before you said, we prove every time we need with the aggregator, and then and then, um, to to send this one one proof to the on chain is a uh, is like a batch, right? Uh, we we aggregate all together and then send to the on chain in one batch, and uh, this is correct. So the, my question is like, there should be a buffer between the original source of independent um, incomes and the aggregated one output sources for the aggregation. So the I mean is on chain results and the uh, sources can be have uh, some difference. So is there any like problem that because of this buffer can cause? Uh, yeah. You go ahead, you were saying something else as well. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, did, did I question properly? Did, did, did yeah, you understand uh, it? I think what I um, understand from your question is that uh, you're saying that you've got inputs and then you've got a buffer. Yeah. And then you've got the two. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by buffer. Uh, so, um, for example, there's this aggregator needs a uh, multiple proof, right? We, we aggregate multiple proof. So the proof itself can be uh, different by the time. Right. Like we have to consider that. And, and this aggregator puts this multiple proof into one and then send this to the on-chain, right? To, to use this, I mean, right? Yeah, you're right on that. So it's like a batch. So we, we aggregate multiple proofs and then make this an, a, at, as a one, one, batch. Uh, one batch, one proof. Yeah. And then one send, yeah, and one, one whole proof and then send this to the on chain. But you're not doing this like every time the proof input was different. Like every time, every single change can cause a batch to the on chain, right? Can I not not cause of you're not doing this right because of the gas or the computational power or so okay. I mean it oh, yeah yeah if I can rephrase your question just just let me know whether I rephrase it correctly or not 
I think you're referring to a specific context in which proof aggregation is used, and that context yeah. are zk rule ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, the way it works on zk rule ups, in a very overview manner, so sort of a very hand review manner, is that uh, you got to give you have circuits that prove the execution trace of the transaction yeah right so yeah. that is one proof a single transaction resulted into a specific state change that yeah. is you can change it but but normally it works it works this way that uh, so like one transaction and one single change can cause a one proof, right? Yeah. Now there are many ways to do it. I might be wrong in cases where, so the, the different implementation, but in a very simple manner, you can think of it this way, that one single transaction would cause a state change. Yeah. Right? You generate a proof for that state change. Yeah. Yeah. Now in a batch, yeah, you got multiple transactions. Yeah. So you prove each of them. That yeah. means that, let's say you have 20 transactions. Right? Yeah. You have 20 proofs now. Yeah. Submitting all these 20 proofs on chain will be expensive. Yes. Because it will co cost time 20. Yeah. Using the aggregation circuit, we aggregate these proofs into a single proof yeah so that the cost of proving it on chain is amortized among all these 20 proofs so yeah. rather than a single person paying let's say per proof the cost of proving it on chain is five dollars rather than everyone paying five dollars the five dollar is split among 20 people yeah and that's how you save the cost yeah, so that's the point that I'm saying about the buffer. So when you when you make a one transaction and send it to the on-chain directly, then you can like reflect your current state to the on-chain directly. So there's no like buffer of the difference, the state difference. But if you combine the 30 tr transaction and 30 proof into one and wait until the 30 things, 30 transactions can be called one and then send this into one chain, it, it means uh, the, 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 there should be a gap between this one batch and the 30 mm -hmm. transactions difference. So, I mean, this, 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 this difference might change, may, might cause a problem. Like, uh, yes. that's the question. Yes. Uh, so you're right on that. There's a buffer, but what happens usually is that you somebody can treat the transaction to the L2. Yeah. And in this case, you're trusting the L2 to give you sort of like, now you can wait for 30 minutes for L2 to submit the proof on chain for the state to be reflected. Right. And it is possible that the proof might not verify and whatever information that you get you got right away what is wrong. So mm. the difference in latency is sort of taken care by the L2. So you are interacting with the L2, it will tell you what the state is. Now, until it is proven on chain, you're sort of trusting the L2 for whatever answer it gave you. Mm. So like, like there's a latency, but we can like avoid the abusing case while checking the, the, the size. timing, timing when they, when I send the, the multiple batch to the proof, to the on-chain. Let, let's take an example, just to make it easy. Yeah. Um, have you used Uni, Uni, Uniswap? Oh, yeah. Okay, so Uniswap is a way to trade between tokens, right? If yeah. I want to exchange ETH for USD, I can trade on Uniswap. Now let's say yeah. there's a Uniswap on L2, zero knowledge yeah. roll, a ZK roll up. Yeah. Uh, the way it would work is, is that you would send the transaction to the roll up. 
and the rollup would update its state right and yeah. you would see instantly that your ethereum has been converted to usd yeah right now the rollup would take many transactions from many users and then yeah. aggregate it into a single one to prove it on chain yeah right yeah in this case until it is not proven on chain you are essentially relying on the roll up sort of trusting the roll up that the state update that it gave you after exchanging ethereum to usd is correct mm, yeah 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 until it is not proven on chain but that doesn't mean that uh, the roll up can steal your money no because the state wouldn't be valid if it is not proven on chain right you mm. what would happen in the worst case is that you thought that your ethereum was converted to usd at some price but it did not simple as that mm. you still with your ethereum okay so your like maze can be used in this aggregator like batch uh right in, right. in a more efficient way than previous one like that's that's the point of this demo right yeah uh it was a more, much more user friendly way so building mm. a circuit is expensive no not expensive uh, but it's hard okay so, got it yeah what we wanted was that uh, the aim of building maze was that uh, you you've already written circum circuits right now we don't want you to learn building a circum circuit to build an aggregation circuit for your circum, circum circuits so mm. maze is an easy way to do it it's a tool that bridges the gap oh okay got it thank you sir right. Okay, Which I think there's sorry. Uh, so ZK Lim has a question. Is like let's say there's an aggregated proof consisting hundred proofs. If I want to prove certain data, are we taking one single proof? Do I need to know what's the other ninety nine proofs too? Yeah, this is the question. Uh, let's say there is an aggregated proof consisting hundred proofs. If I want to prove certain data, are within one single proof? Do I need to know what's the what are the other ninety nine proofs? Well, um, you it depends on the circuit. So it's very specific question. So let's say you've got ninety nine proofs. Ah, uh, just just to ah uh, be much more clear on this, are you? Generating the rest of the ninety nine proofs are for the same circuit. Uh, just a question back. Um, just just so that I can get a bit more clear. Are uh, rest of the ninety nine proofs for the same circuit? Uh, hi Lim. Uh, are you still there? Okay. Yeah. So even if they are generated from the different parties, are they for the same circuit? That means that. Are they generating proof for the same thing? Then yes, you can sort of uh, yeah. So what you can do is that you can have a very uh, okay. So what you can simply do is that you can have a verification circuit for those ninety nine proofs, and then a separate circuit for that one single proof in which you want to prove certain data. I think that's possible. Yeah, and then you can generate a proof for all of this at once. But I don't think that would be that useful. You can have a different circuit for that one single proof, and have a aggregation circuit. It will be, it would be a lot more complex in that case. But anyways, yeah, it is possible.
Does it make sense? Hmm. Uh, what if it's a different from different circuits? Like, would be, yeah, would you need to know, like, from each circuit, like, from each proof from each circuit? Uh, mm, hmm. Well, it depends. So, if you want to have an ignition circuit for two different proofs, you can do that as well. There's no issue on that. So basically, there's two circuit. You combine it and you prove once. Is it? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's possible. Yes, you you need to know the proofs of every proof to generate a valid proof for the ignition circuit. Yes, that's true. Thanks. No worries. Okay. So uh, yeah, I was nearly done with my demo and now, okay, let's get back to the slides. Just two minutes. Hey, sir. Uh, <laughs> can, I, can I a question? Like, how do you aggregate this proofs? Are you making a marker tree or are you just using a link list or like, like how the, the structure is like, combined? Yes. So, um, okay. Hmm. So your question is that how do we build a negation circuit? No, yeah. how do you like aggregate the multiple circuits? How do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Using what? Okay. So are you guys familiar with how does Plonk work? This is. Oh, Plonk? <laughs> Plonk, yeah. Yeah. The... Oh, it's similar like Plonk, is it? Plonk too? No, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'm just asking a question just whether, are you guys familiar with Plonk, oh, no, not, not, not really, but I've heard about it. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to explain you how do you build a creation circuit for Plonk proofs? Does that, does it work? Okay. 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 okay so what is a Plonk proof? A Plonk proof consists of two steps. So in order to verify a Plonk proof, there's a cheaper part and there's an expensive part. The cheaper part computes a bunch of data. That's a prerequisite for the expensive part. And the expensive part is called the pairing check, which is quite expensive to do in the circuit. Does it make sense? Yes. That, is it the difference between those, the ceremony or like that there's a phase two for the ZK, is, is you're explaining different? No, no, no. What I'm trying to explain is that it's a single verifier. How do you verify? Uh, so, uh, okay, okay. okay. You can think of verification of a plong proof at two as a two-step process. The first step is expensive. It is is cheap. It's very uh, cheap okay. compared to the second step. And the second step is the expensive part that is the pairing check. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so th that, that is how you verify a plong proof, right? A bunch of computation followed by a pairing check. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So yeah, 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 yeah. Multiple multiple computation is a chip, and then and then we do that, and we do the expensive thing that really verifies the input. Yeah, so it, it uses the 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 part that you get from part one yeah. to do the pairing check. And if the pairing check is valid, uh the proof is valid. Okay. Make sense? So basically, you're trying to say that when you aggregate the data, it's cheap. But when you want to try to prove that those data is expensive. No, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm just talking about a single proof right now. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, okay, okay. okay. That's a single proof. If you want to verify a single plong proof, that's how it happens. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. 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 Yeah. Now, in an aggregation circuit that aggregates a bunch of plong proofs, what happens? is that we verify the cheap part of each of the plong proofs. 
Oh. oh. We verified the part one, that is the G part of each of the prompt groups. So isn't it expensive? It is, it is not, ex so the best part about a proof is that doesn't matter how expensive it is on the prover side. So I'm a prover, right? Yeah. If I want to prove something, then it's expensive for me, but the verifier it is, but for the verifier it is not expensive because the proof is constant. It does not scale with the amount of proof of computation present there, right? Does it make sense? Okay. I understand. Yeah, I, I think I understand what it means basically. So, like, no matter how many how many prong circuits there are, like, it will always like be constant, constant, right? It's constant in some way yeah, because the proof size is constant. So the verification cost will be constant. Ah, uh, okay, I understand. Proof size is constant, so verification yeah. is also is also constant. constant. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, okay. With having more proofs, you are making it expensive for the prover. Like for example, the oh. proof generating the proof. Verifier is a matter. Doesn't matter for verifier. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, because now now for the verifier it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Mm, okay. So what happens is that you verify within the circuit all the uh the part one of all the proofs that is the cheap part and then for the second part what you do is that you accumulate the second part of each proof into a final accumulator and you prove that the accumulation is correct but you're still left with the final accumulator mm, this right. accumulator is making a sort such a marco tree or Oh, no, it's a just... simple random linear combination. Uh, all linear, all linear, all linear. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. You've got a proof. You've got a. Uh, you've got the final accumulator. Now the verifier would verify the proof. That means that it verifies that the accumulation into the final accumulator is correct, and the cheap mm -hmm. part of each proof is correct. And then the verifier separately outside the verification process verifies the um, final accumulator. That is the single pairing check. And if single the pairing check is valid, rest of the proof is valid. Yes. Oh, now, now go to the second page. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so that was uh, that is how an ignition circuit works. Now, I just wanted to show you a few numbers. Uh, is this visible? Uh, yes, it's visible. Yeah. So, as I said before, that it is good for the verifier because everything stays constant, right? The proof size is constant. The call data is constant. On the verification part. The cost remains constant, but as the amount of proofs increase, the prover cost increases. So, in order to generate an aggregation, so aggregated proof for twenty-five proofs, it takes thirty minutes using a one zero seven GB RAM, like with a peak RAM of one zero seven GB on a pretty buffy machine, and for fifty-eight proofs, it takes around an hour. So as you can see that as, as the number of proofs increase, the cost of generating an aggregation circuit increases as well. Yeah, so that would be it from my side. And then you can sort of scan this QR code for downloading maze, or you can sort of contact me anytime on Twitter. Yeah, so one question for me, right? Uh, so like when I'm thinking about maze, so like this reminds me of a, a L1 chain called uh, Mina. So I think it's uh, doing the same thing as well. It's uh, recursive proving, uh, making all the proofs into one proof and then uh, submit it on chain, right? So like, um, so like like you say, like the proofs like uh when the proofs are a lot, it gets a lot of it gets more expensive. So like uh that's the reason maybe one of the reason why uh the blockchain is quite slow. 
So uh, do you think that there's some similarities between uh, Mace and uh, Elwa and Amina, in some sense? Um, so in case of Mina, as, as, as far as I'm aware, the way it works is that uh, you've got a single proof and then that's it. That's the, that's the blockchain. And then every time when you do something, there's a state change, you prove that the state transition is correct from the last state to the current state. Conceptually, yes, they are aggregation, aggregating state transition proofs into a single proof. So they're verifying that single proof would verify everything. But in terms of uh, technicality, in terms of like the way they've implemented it is different. But conceptually, yes. Yeah, so any more questions uh, from, from anyone? Oh, hi, Jay. Hi. Uh, maybe perhaps a last question for me. Uh, so this, uh, so I'm just wondering, like, for the layer two landscape, right, how it works, it's uh, like, for example, some of the uh, ZK rollups, like uh, ZK Sing, Starkware, Starknet, uh, sorry, Starkware, those are the one that already did all this circuit aggregation for the user, right? So this maze instead is allow people to build their own circuit. Yes, it's for developers. Mm, okay, okay. Well, just want to picture how, where are all this uh, technology is within that L2 landscape, which is, I think, very fascinating. Thanks, thanks. Nice. Hi, uh, I have one last question, actually. Just wanted to know, like, what are, what are Mace's, Mace's uh, future plans and goals, like, what are you trying to like, achieve in the future with Maze? Yeah, so uh, the goal of Maze is, was to actually uh, make it easy for developers to build aggregation circuits. So that was the goal. Now, the point is that there are better tools, sorry, gradually there are better tools. So, so gradually, we have better schemes for building aggregation circuit. There's something called NOVA, if you guys are aware of it. NOVA is much better than, I think, in terms of complexity and computation, than- What's uh, NOVA? Uh, uh, I'll share the link in just two minutes. Uh, it's, I, be, I think that it's much, I've shared the screen. I've, I've shared the link. Ah, okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry, continue. You can continue. Yeah. So I think uh, they've got better schemes coming up. And it wow. is getting much, much, much better as well. Other than that, uh, yeah. So I think the gradual, I think the future for Maze would be that it would be adopting these schemes. Ah, okay. I see. Thank you. So any more questions from the from the rest? Okay, so uh, uh sorry you're muted, Shinkai. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like uh thank you very much, Jay, for uh, answering so many questions. And I think all of us learn a lot uh, regarding maze and ZK, uh, zero noise proofs in general as well. So uh, thank once again, thank you very much. So uh, do you have any, uh, uh, do you have anything to, to, to say with us uh, before we end this uh, session? Okay. Uh, thanks a lot for having me. It was a fun thing to do. Uh, thanks, Kim. Thanks for the comments. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much as well. So uh, right now I'm going to stop the recording.